My name is Pat Kelly, and I'm the president CEO of the Ebony Horsewoman. And so, welcome. We are doing this taping today because of the COVID conditions in the country, the equine affair that we were scheduled to attend has gone virtual now. So this is our contribution towards um, keeping the equine affair alive in our region. So I'm here to talk to you a little bit about equine assisted therapy, psychotherapy. I think without adding in cultural competency, we would negate the real impact of equine therapy. 36 years ago when we got started, it was clear from a woman's perspective, because we started off as a women's organization, that the horses played an important part in our sanity. We didn't understand the science then. I think the science was just beginning to emerge um, and having some credibility, the science of equine assisted therapy, psychotherapy. But we understood that there was something that kept us um, sane, if you will. As we turned the organization into a youth organization, it, it was even clearer how horses impacted youth. Now, I emphasize cultural competency because when we began, it wasn't much credence that was given to the fact that African American and Latino children were now on horses. I remember hearing uh, conversations over and over. What's what's the uh, what's the sense of having little black kids trot around on horses? Well, it wasn't necessarily the trotting around on horses. It was the impact that they were getting from the horses. One of the things to be um, noted here is that. Children living in the inner city, particularly African American and Latino children, often face a tremendous amount of trauma. Oftentimes, your inner city have um, a good deal of crime. You find an, an extreme amount of poverty, unemployment. Uh, in this neighborhood alone, this particular section of Hartford, Connecticut, it's a food desert. There's no place to get fresh fruits and vegetables. So, the, so food sustainability is, is a large issue. The educational system uh, predominantly across the country in, in the urban centers isn't that great. So all of this is being impacted on you. And trauma affects everything. It affects school life. It affects home life. It affects community life. And, and it begins to tear down the pieces of us that are sustainable, that should be sustainable. And children are the biggest victims because they have very little uh, wherewithal to deal with this, and many of them don't even understand it. What we recognized early on when we started the organization in this particular community was that children began to release a lot of anxiety and depression. Again, not understanding the science, we knew there was something that the horses was giving them. And it worked. It worked for an awful long time. Children began to do better in school. They were doing better at home. They were not as um, active in the streets. As a matter of fact, they were here almost 24-7. Equine therapy began to emerge with the science behind it. And the science, I think, that what we didn't understand in the beginning was that these beautiful, magnificent horses, these large animals, are social animals like we are. They are family animals. We have families, they have herds. There's an alpha, there's a protector in the family, there's a leader in the family. We have that kind of structure, hopefully, in most of our families as well. Horses are prey animals, and we're predators. Not only are we predators, but we're the greatest predator on the planet. We hunt and kill everything. Horses are naturally suspicious of us, but there's this thing with them, this, this, this safety precaution to be in a herd. 
And so when we take them out of their natural herds and, and put them, place them with us, they need to join up. They need to join up if we're safe, if we're safe. So over the years, we began to see the interaction between the kids and the horses. Now, when we have children that have trauma, you can get a, a wide range of um, descriptions, activities, um, exhibits, if you will. Some come with a lot of mouth, so much mouth. They're talking all the time. They're, they're, they're angry. And then you get the ones who are uh, in surrender. There's very little that they can say. You ask them, what's wrong? I don't know. Nothing. But they're traumatized. And these animals, these horses, have the ability to work with both extremes, the aggressive and the surrender. These children, in their innocence, begin to find a trust partner, if you will, in these horses, and vice versa. These horses give those of us who understand the language indications that there's things that are wrong. There's things that are not safe about this particular person. On the other side of the, of the paddock, if you will, the children begin to find a friend that's non-judgmental. No, no one's judging them. No one's talking back. No one's accusing them. And it works. And it works. And it's called equine therapy. Horses, because of their uh, nature of being prey animals, tell us when a particular individual is not safe for its herd. And if it's not safe for the horse's herd, that child, that individual, probably is not safe for their own herd. That's in, in, information that, this, that the therapist can use, that we use, to begin to understand and try to unpack what the, the issues are. Equine therapy is a tremendous resource. What's important about it, not only is the horse piece of it, is that there, there must be a cultural competency end of it as well. Children of particular ethnic groups, African Americans and Latinos, have cultural cues that if you're not familiar with it, you can misread it. You can misread it to the point where you will break trust between the individual and the therapist while you're trying to get the horse integrated into this therapeutic session. If the cultural competency is not there, it is already a distrustful format. So it's important to understand, not only to have cultural comp competency, but cultural understanding and humility as well. And this is something that we train all of our therapists on. We're very fortunate right now to have probably the only African-American firm in the United States that's certified in equine assisted therapy. And they employ black and brown therapists to work within um, this community and others as well. Cultural competency in applying any kind of therapeutic approach is critical, very critical. And even in equine assisted therapy.